You want to be loved? If you ask me that, uh, it is money that answer it all. <laughs> money, they say, is the, the root of all evil. Money, they say, can't buy life. Money, they say, can't buy love. But we still need it. How is that possible? My guest this morning is uh, Mr. Samuel D.A. Williams, a motivational godfather, an international speaker, best-selling author, rich mind coach, and entrepreneur. taste hell <laughs> oh man 95.7 megahertz it is the mid-morning affair tell a friend to tell another friend 11 26 is the time and uh, i'm happy to have in the studio with me some of the a williams as i said earlier he is an international speaker a motivational godfather that's why he calls himself a motivational godfather i'm going to ask him why he calls himself that anyways he is also a best-selling author a rich mind coach and an entrepreneur welcome into the studio oh thank you thank you nice so how thank was you. your weekend oh beautiful Williams. beautiful beautiful <laughs> beautiful so tell me I was asking this question earlier. I was like, um, if money can't buy life, money can't buy love, and uh, money is uh, the root of all evil, why then do we keep hustling for money? Uh, thank you so much and uh, for our listeners. Uh, I'm SDA Williams, as he said. Um, let me answer your question with this. Mm -hmm. I always say for the lack of money, is the root of all evil for the lack of money it is the other way around <laughs> yeah it's not for the love it's the lack of it. for the lack of money. money is the root of all evil okay look at uh places like our ghettos and all the stuff mm -hmm. the poor places mm -hmm. that's where most of the evil happens okay look at where our rich places mm -hmm. it doesn't happen often mm -hmm. so it's for the lack of money is the root of all evil Okay. Mm. The lack of money is the root, is of, the root all, of all evil. evil. Wow. Yeah. I'm, 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 seriously, this is my first time <laughs> hearing this. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't probably you. Because what we know is the love of nah, money it, it, is the root of all evil. Yeah. For, for like, through my studies, I realized that is the lack of money. Mm -hmm. It's not for the love of money. Mm -hmm. It's the lack of money. Mm -hmm. It's the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. And um, as you said. Money cannot buy you happiness. Money cannot exactly, buy you life. Yes. Uh, money can buy you life. Uh, yeah. How does that happen? Oh, my. If you go to... There are so many people, big, small, huge, who, who uh, have gotten to that point of life uh, that uh, money couldn't save them. Oh, money will give you some time compared to somebody who doesn't have it. It at all. Yeah, okay. because let's take it. If you go to hospitals, yeah. if you have money, you can have a hospital bed, you can have a better place, at least to have a peace of mind before you die. Mm -hmm. But somebody who doesn't have it, yeah. they will ask you to go and buy it or go and look for it mm -hmm. and all those stuff. So if you have money, mm -hmm. things are better in life than you don't have it, especially in our place, mm -hmm. like Ghana here. Money tops all. Especially here in Ghana. Especially here in Ghana and Africa as a whole. Yeah. Money is the God we serve. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Money is the God we serve. Money is the God we serve. So if I you don't know how to I, serve I, him. I don't, think, I don't think some of my listeners will agree with you on this one. <laughs> yes. Talk. Maybe due to religious beliefs and... Um, their background, how they were raised and all those stuff. But believe me, money is the leader. Money ruled the country. Money is everything. Money is everything. Money is everything. <laughs> okay, good people. Um, uh, my guest this morning is uh, Mr. Samuel D.A. Williams. Uh, he is a motivational godfather. He is an international speaker, a best-selling author, a rich mind coach, and an entrepreneur. 
he is my guest and we're talking money this morning but uh before we go on with uh, money i would like uh, you to i mean tell us uh who really is uh, Samuel D.A. Williams? All right, Samuel D.A. Williams. Because uh, one is out there who will be asking, who is this yeah, guy? Yeah, who is S.D.A. Uh, Williams? Yeah. S.D.A. Williams is a, a Ghanaian born, mm -hmm. but living in Australia. Okay. Almost half of his life. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. So, uh, I came to Ghana back in 2011. Okay. And, uh, when did you leave Ghana? I left Ghana before after just after school so just after secondary yeah, school yes after what school did you school? attend a branch secondary okay where is that uh, in uh Uwutu senior west okay yeah, mm -hmm. so after i left and um i came back in 2011 and i realized that in africa or in ghana because i went to liberia and other places in okay. africa yeah. where ghana particularly mm -hmm. we waste everything including human beings we waste everything wow. That was uh, what you your that, findings. That was my findings across Africa. Yes, mm. that was my findings. Mm. We waste everything, mm. but when you go to let's say Australia, where I come from, mm. everyone is important. Mm. Everyone, okay. yeah, every even one soul is important. Okay. But here we waste everything, including human beings, mm. because what it, what makes me come into writings um, is I met President Kufo okay. then uh, 2016 mm. and um, that was when I have my first book The School Life The School Life that yeah. was your very first that was book. my very first we're going to come to that we're going to yeah. come to that part of your life but yeah. uh, now now we want to know who really uh, Samuel D.A. Williams is. oh someone yeah as I said Samuel D.A. Williams Australian uh, Ghanaian born Australian mm. uh, I leave my mother Ghanaian, my father Ghanaian. Okay. So my mother from Uwutu and uh, my father is from uh, Elmina. Okay. So I was born in Takrade. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that fancy mix. Mm. Yeah. So you so, just had to relocate uh, to Australia because of uh, your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because, because my mom was there and um Life wasn't easy. Okay, so <laughs> let's get there. Um, tell me, tell me, just summarize a life in Australia for me. How many years were you in Australia? Oh, about almost fifteen years. Now. Okay, so yeah. summarize it for me. How was life uh, with you comparing Ghana and Australia? How is how was life uh, fair with you in Australia? Oh, if we talk about Australia comparing to Ghana, mm -hmm. there's nothing, nothing compared to Ghana and Australia. Really, nothing. Really? Yeah. Wow. From the first day you are born yeah. to the, di the day, the day you, you die, die, there's nothing you can compare to Ghana. Why do you say so? Because they have, everything is unique, like unique FM. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Ghana is uh, on its own. Mm -hmm. well, let's say, it's, um, if I'm not missing my words, I would say Ghana is like, uh, 1945 mm. and Australia is in 2023 mm. or 2021 Whoa. so vast difference vast difference, vast difference. Mm. yeah um, the reason why w some of us we went to Australia is when life wasn't easy here mm. so that's where my mom thought would be the best, the best place to, to start and it was it's a good idea it was a good idea yo. yeah, yeah very good, good decision your parents very came. good and, uh, i'm always grateful for that okay. like very grateful mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i see all right so let's come back to ghana <laughs> <laughs> Ghana, I coming, love ghana. yes I love coming ghana. back to ghana <laughs> what are some of the things that you saw that inspired you to start writing your books all right. When, when I was in Australia, there, there was a point in my life uh, I asked myself, like, what would be the best ideal uh, to make Africans start thinking rich, start thinking that life is not about somebody, like, you know, pulling you down by you yourself. And um, then the inspiration started coming. Then I wrote my first book, The School Life. And when I came to Ghana, I was really accepted by President Kufo, President Donado, President, uh, uh, Vice President Baumia. Mm. They, they they were the people who inspired me more. Okay. Especially President Kufo, who is my godfather. But how did you get uh, in contact with them? Uh, through 
somebody who knows somebody okay. and somebody. So yeah. whom you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So they inspire me a lot. Mm -hmm. Then, for through my own research as well, I realized that we're not into reading. Okay. But the best things are in the books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best things are in the books okay. because some some of the books that I read mm -hmm. before writing my own mm -hmm. books has mm -hmm. really transformed my life. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we, the youth, if we want the best nation, we want the best things to be happening, we need to go back to the books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. We need to go back to the books. We need to go back to the books. What What is the life of a motivational speaker like? Uh, the life of a motivational speaker is... Um, it's like people saying, we can't do it. And you're the only person saying... You can do it. Like, unique, unique... Mm -hmm. The unique FM, like you know, mm -hmm. take unique out. The rest, they are, the rest are the same. Yeah. So that's how it is. Mm -hmm. You get the point. Mm -hmm. So you are the only person who believes, let's go, we can do it. Like you know, you are the commander mm -hmm. and you are a leader. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people try as much as possible to tell you it's not possible, but you are the only one who have that burning desire that it's possible. Okay. So how long have you been writing? Uh just five years and yeah, i've yeah. written about almost six books okay I yeah. see. Yeah. but we are going to concentrate on your current books yeah, yeah my mm -hmm. current books and uh, the title of one is uh, fortify your youthful mind and grow rich yeah and then the other one is uh, just, just think, think rich, rich. Yeah. i'd like you to uh, tell me what inspired you actually to put down these two books all right, the, the first, my first book, as I said, The School Life. Mm -hmm. So The School Life is all about my life. Mm -hmm. Then later on, when I spoke to President Kufour, and he was the one who was guiding me through the process. Okay. Because he's been a president, he's been a youth, so he knows what the youth would love to. Mm -hmm. And so then he, he was talking to me about how come... Like, how come you don't write a book about the youth, how they can fortify their youthful mind? It was just a saying. It was it was yeah. a conversation. Yeah, it was a conversation. That brought about the title of the yeah, book. Yeah, that was <laughs> the okay. title of the book. And so I was like, yeah, if you're a young person, you have the energy, you have the time, but you don't have the money. Mm -hmm. So what will fortify it to make it happen? And then I came up with the title, Fortify Your Youthful Mind and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me, how did publishing your first book change your process of writing? Oh, the first book, the first book, I, I would say, let's say, is, um, as a motivational godfather, there was a point in time mm -hmm. I wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. Because I was with this idea that, oh, I will hit with the first book and everybody will know me and all this mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And re I realized, I did a um, luncheon. And only 11 people came. Mm -hmm. Out of the 11, nine of them mm -hmm. were my family members. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so automatically you think you failed. Mm -hmm. But the inspiration was like, you know, you still to, burning. Yeah, you and, need to keep going. Yeah, still yeah. burning. And so going. now, like, you know, I'm so happy for what I've done. Mm -hmm. I went to President Kufo last Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, for his copies. He couldn't wait for his copies. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, I can imagine. Yeah, he couldn't wait for yeah. his copies. So I'm so grateful like a young person like me is inspiring other people. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what what um do you have to say to the youth of today who think money is everything and that uh, whichever way they have to get it? All right, the the one thing that I've noticed is when I got here, like there's these things people believe yeah. that money should be the ultimate price. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, money is the God here. Mm -hmm. But the way to go around it is not what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Like there's one thing God gave it to every human being. Mm -hmm. Without it, you can't survive. You won't be sitting here. Mm -hmm. It's the head. The head yes. So we have the our, brain. We have the head. And we have the brain in that. We have the mind in that. And so you need to use them. Mm -hmm. But people think it's all about physical strength. Mm -hmm. That will make you successful. Mm -hmm. If it's about physically, 
the gate cannot lift a bag of cement. Yeah. But he's worth almost uh, 150 billion. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. So it's it's all about the brain, the mind, the head that you have mm -hmm. is what you need to use. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to go to that extreme mm -hmm. of making money. Mm -hmm. But the money itself mm -hmm. is the brain that you use and make sure that whatever you get out of like you know the money that you get mm -hmm. it should be genuine you should be happy that you have it and you ha you should be happy to spend it like you know wisely because some people the w the whole thing they go through they can't even spend their own money mm -hmm. they they like the things you go through like when i came people mm -hmm. that was talking to me about how young people in this country mm -hmm trying as much as possible to make money in all angles. Mm -hmm. Places that they sleep, mm -hmm. like, you know, they're all caught and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Man, it's not helping you. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna 